All right, we're back here with little Joe, and we're going to see if we can get a halter put on him here and do a little groundwork to start out with with him on this second lesson and see how he goes with it. He led pretty good coming in here. So I'm thinking that this will probably be pretty much a piece of cake for him as far as how he leads around and figures things out and moves off your hand and kind of pays attention to you. You can see if you'll move those hind quarters around and bend a little bit here. Start getting him set up for one ring stop and bending and flexing. I don't know how much bending and flexing he's had. Let's start to get him to figure out how to move his feet. Let's see how well he flexes here. Pretty soft. We've done a little work on him. Not too shabby. He's got a pretty big headset. Stands up in the air with his head pretty tall. So he kind of naturally collects when he's moving along, so I'm not but I'm not real concerned with him collecting. I just want him to give off that halter a little bit for right now. Let's see how he is about my lead getting tossed at him here. Yeah, nobody's really done that with him, I don't think. Probably going to need a little more desensitizing before we start doing a lot of stuff with him. That's okay. This is a good way to start out. You don't have to worry about bags and tarps and stuff. And get yourself in a big wreck and get him really upset about stuff. You start out small. And let them gain their confidence about dealing with new things. And then you can work your way up and build their confidence on different things. It's always a learning process with these guys to start out with because I used to take people's word for things and I'd usually end up finding a bunch of major problems or holes that they never told me about or forgot about or failed to mention. So 
It's not that I don't trust people. I just don't trust people anymore. Because <clears throat> I'm getting too old to just wing it <clears throat> and worry about it as it comes up. I want to try and cover all the bases before I get to the point where something happens. Now we're going to use a little simulation of the cinch here and see how he's acting with that. I know he hasn't had a flank cinch on, so he's liable to get a little bit humpy about the flank cinch when I put that on him for the first time. But I won't be putting the I won't be putting the back cinch on him until I got a couple of saddlings on him with the big saddle. So he's probably had a front cinch on and walked around a little bit because he doesn't seem to be too bothered by that. Getting his feet unlocked is a little bit of an issue, but that's all right. That's pretty good. Oh, buddy. see what he knows for groundwork here. Now when I start out with these young horses, you want to make it real obvious where it is you want them to go and what you want them to do. And you first, you give them the door that you want them to go through, a path of least resistance or the least amount of pressure so you don't have to apply as much pressure when you use your technique right way to start sending them off. You want them their nose kind of tilted out, get that shoulder moved out, and then once you've got their shoulder moved out and faced away from you, then you concentrate on the hindquarters and you work your way down past that shoulder until you get a couple of steps going out in the direction that you want. But you want to make it obvious where you want them to go before you start putting pressure on them. And don't expect perfection right off the bat with how they start out. Sometimes they start out real easy, sometimes they want to back away because they just don't really get it. But you don't stand right in front of them and expect them to go someplace. You gotta move, you gotta keep moving and get them to get out there and work behind them until you can get that forward momentum until you get that forward momentum going there we go well, they said he's been ground worked a little bit maybe he has maybe he's been lunged a little bit he's been free lunged i know that so he knows how to go forward pretty well but it's all the little things in between getting them to move their feet constructively and turn off of this lead just like he's going to have to do when I go to start riding him because I'm going to ride him for the first couple of times or three times in this rope halter so I set up my rein and my pressure just like I would be riding him to get him used to the feel of how I want him to go when I get on him and how I want him to stop and turn and bend. There we go. A lot of people when I'm doing these groundwork classes, I tell them, you know, that their primary rein is the one out of her hand they're directing them with just like they're riding them. This is my primary rein, this is my support rein, my direct rein or support rein, however you want to however you want to term it. And I tell them with their support rein that they should have enough length out there to be able to use that for support and motivation to get what they are asking for and to use to push that shoulder out away from them a little bit if they need to. Put up a little bit of a visual block with your lead 
or your secondary rain. But then when you get that motivation to go forward like he just did off of that secondary rain, you got to quit using it because it'll desensitize them to the fact that it doesn't mean anything to them anymore. And a lot of folks in my groundwork classes, they just sit there and they keep swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging and pretty soon the horse forgets about what the real meaning of it is. And then they got to raise the level and maybe give them a swat or a spank or something else to get them to go someplace. So they need to only use the amount of pressure they need. Let's try them the other way here a little bit and see what happens. Use the only amount of motivation you need to get what you're looking for. And then quit applying the pressure and let him do what you ask. See, I got a little bit of licking and chewing going on there. He's going like, yeah, I got to think about this. I'm figuring it out, though. I don't use giddy up and walk and trot and canter and all that stuff. I use kissing to get their feet moving, get their attention. And I use woe as we go along. Right now, woe is not the question. It's going forward, so it's just kissing. There we go. He's a pretty smart little horse. He's picking this stuff up. I don't know, you know, like I said, I don't know. Maybe he's had a little bit of this, and it's just been a while since he's done it. I know his owner's in the in the service, and she was gone all last month uh, on deployment. So it might be just the fact that he's been off for a month and is a little rusty. But he does know. The one thing he does know a little bit of is how to back up off of that lead, and that's a good thing. So we're not starting from square one with him. And he's got to get used to my way of doing things, too. How I ask to send him forward, or how I'm asking him to bend, or stop, or turn, or back up. He's got to figure out how I'm doing it. And be able to get into the rhythm of what we're asking here. But we're getting, you know, some pretty nice transitions for just a little bit of work here going from right to left and stopping and backing up and he's thinking and paying attention and doing what I'm asking him to do here and starting to set back a little bit when he turns. Come on. I didn't ask him to start there but that's okay because he kind of set himself back to get his feet out of the ground and get going, so I'm not going to discourage that because if he does that naturally, that'll be a big help when I start riding him too. All right, that's a good place for to stop and let him think about that for a little bit, and that's what we're going to continue on with uh, today. <coughs> the one thing I am going to do here before we shut the film off is I'm going to bring my saddle blanket out and start up in the desensitizing here a little bit because he does seem a little bit jumpy with things going around him and whatnot. So I start with my soft saddle blanket and I always keep myself between my horse and the scary thing to start off with to give them the support as the herd leader and let them know that I'm going to be here to keep them out of trouble. And all I want him to do is trust me enough to move his feet and follow me around and not drag me all over the place and just get used to figuring out not only that I'm going to support him but also I'm not going to let these scary things get to him and he doesn't have to be afraid of them and once I get a good response this way that he's not 
upset about it and he's starting to get curious and he moves up a little bit on it. Then I'm going to turn around and take myself out of the picture and let him deal with it this way. Still offering the support and if he'd get, you know, ornery about this way and go to back and off, I'd right away quit and go back to this way so that I can unlock his feet and not start teaching him how to back away from something that's scaring him because that's the last thing I want him to start learning how to do. I want him to stand there and be comfortable with things. And once we get that pretty well, then I'm going to let him sniff it and chew on it if he wants to and rub him with it a little bit and start working on getting him down here so that he's not afraid of this thing. Rubbing down the side of him and getting up on his back and getting prepped up and ready to get saddled up here, which so far from the way things went today, we're probably, we'll probably put my little saddle on him tomorrow and uh, see how that goes with the little saddle and work him a little bit and let him pack it around and getting used to getting saddled in the cinch and working with the, the cinch. Now see, he has a little bit of a tendency to want to move off on this side because it's something new. But I want to make sure that he's good with both sides getting saddled. <coughs> and if he has to move, that's okay. I'll let him move until he quits. And when he gets comfortable with it, then I'm going to quit what I'm doing too. And I'll take the pressure away. And then we'll come back up here and we'll start again and see if this time he'll stand still <clears throat> and not feel the need to have to move around when I get this up here and start messing with him. Good, buddy. <clears throat> I'm thinking that my initial interpretation of this guy is pretty, pretty right on, pretty close. He seems not to be, have a tendency to really lose his mind over new things. <coughs> Get himself upset about stuff. Doesn't spool up and pretty laid back about things so we'll uh, go with that assumption to start with here and see how it goes tomorrow and I'm thinking he's going to be a pretty nice one to make a video out of on Colt starting not like the last one I did where I Wake up. Back up. Oh boy. Yeah, it fell off. It's okay. I didn't intend for that saddle blanket to fall off, but he backed out pretty quick and kind of dumped it off. And that's okay. That didn't seem to bother him too much. But when he loses track of his space and his attention, and he doesn't do what I ask him to do, I got to take care of that right away, irregardless. Or else it just it turns into a bigger distraction later on and a bigger issue when he wants to get bigger and tougher and knows he can be up in my face and I won't do anything about getting him back where he's supposed to be. 
So there we go. The nice, the initial first day of what we're going to be working on here with little Joe. And he's going pretty well. So we'll see you tomorrow and, and uh, see how it goes tomorrow. See you later.